drive to airport. Get the shuttle to the airport. Two hours to wait for check-in. Check-in and do the bag drop. Have a block. Go through security. Locate the gate. Gin beverage. Tequila. Have another blob. Beer. Tequila. Sardine tin. Fly. Land. Flop. Three hours in passport control. <laughs> Collect baggage. Pick up rental car. Snack. Dodge cows. Meet the parents. Are you excited, love? <laughs> What's the bugger doing now? Uh, I got married. Um, this, this is my wife, Amanda. I hope you know what you've taken on, lass. Is the right bloody handful is this one. Anyway, let's put the kettle on. Aye. All right, let's go inside, yeah. Well, it's good to see you guys again. It's been four years. I know, it's been a long time. I'm really pleased to see you, Gavin. And Amanda, I'm, I'm really pleased to see you. So, are you a photographer then, Amanda? Yeah, I actually am. I'm, I'm quite good. Oh, what sort of camera do you use? I use a Hasselblad. Hasselblad? Bloody hell, you must have some money. These are what I used to use and I could never afford one of them. Let me show you these. Now this one, this Exactor, it was made in Germany in about 1950. And that was one of my favourites. And that's a single lens reflex. This one was made even in England, this one, called an Ensign. And that takes 120 film. And it's also you know, like that, you can pop it in your pocket. But this one is a really built. It's called um, a Retina 2C, and they were made for Kodak in Germany. Do you want to come up and see my dark room? I, I can show you all the tricks up there. Enlargers and what have you. So, Gavin, where do you want to go on this photography trip? Well, I've always wanted to go to Ireland. Right, Gavin, Ireland. I've been there, I've got some slides I can show you. Look at these. Just a minute. Look at this. A load of slides of Ireland. Do you want to have a look at them? Uh, no, we're a bit jet lagged, aren't we, love? Um, we should probably sleep for a couple of days. Uh, yeah, I really need a dump. Oh, okay then. There's, there's only a couple hundred in this box. But perhaps some other time, then, eh? Such a relief to finally be in bed in Tiller. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure we don't want to see these slides? <laughs> no. All right then. After a couple of days of sleep, we began exploring Scotland, which, if you've never been before, well, it's pretty much cows, sheep and rainbows. But something that I really love about Scotland is the history, like this Neolithic tomb. This thing is older than Roy's camera collection and definitely a lot more interesting. And when it comes to landscape photography, Scotland is a bloody treasure trove. See, this is what I love about Scotland, is there's just so much, just on the side of the road, you're driving along and then you spot a scene like this, which right now is, is made magic just by the light. The sun's over there and it's just blasting into this forest from the side and it's lighting up the canopy and one tree in the center of my composition and then this dry stone wall that's completely covered in moss. Absolutely gorgeous, we're just driving past. This is how far I am <laughs> from the road and I just saw that and I thought, right, Get the camera out so I'll, I'll i'll show you the back of the camera so my composition is this grouping of three trees you've got this one here this one here it looks like two but it's actually one tree let's make that a bit darker and this one right in the center of the frame off in the distance because that's the one that's got the light being hit so these two are really just kind of a frame to create a bit of a tunnel for that tree in the distance. I just absolutely love this, this light. So if I make this a little bit darker, you could see that off in the distance, this canopy is just glowing hot, bright green. I mean, look at that lens flare, that, there you go. That should give you a clear idea of the composition. So it kind of looks like it's an offset composition, but when you look at this group of three trees as a whole, I've kind of put them in the center of the frame. And so I like the forms, I like the shapes of these, and I like this frame that it creates for that tree in the distance, but I just love that side light that's hitting that tree, 
hitting the canopy and hitting that dry stone wall that you can maybe just see in the center of the frame there. Maybe if I do that, you can, you can get an idea. And I might actually crop a little bit out of the bottom of this, but I really do like the branches in, in the canopy at the top there, just the, the way that they curve inwards towards the center of the frame. That's my composition. If this shot turns out to be any good, here's a shot. In this video, I'm going to show you a one button compositional tool that I use in almost every single landscape photography shoot that I ever do, and it is unbelievably simple. And it's also a really good way to avoid unnecessarily switching lenses, which, as you know, if you're a mirrorless shooter, every time you switch lenses, every dust particle in the universe gets sucked right onto your sensor. So keep watching, this is absolutely not going to blow your mind. The forest photography here is, it's top notch, it really is. And that is because there's so many of these beautiful, gnarly beech trees. Some call it the tree of life. And they're everywhere. They're, they're all over Scotland. And uh, this particular little country lane, which I think we're the only car that ever came up here today. Yeah. There's nobody here. It's absolutely dead. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, I've got this whole forest to myself. And what I wanted to do is find one tree, one subject that I can use to demonstrate this really cool trick that I use all of the time. So I've picked this one here and I actually kind of like this backlit quality that we've got to it right now. The sun is, I think it's up there. So it's a bit higher than I would like. I was actually here yesterday and as the sun set over there, the light was absolutely magnifique. But this is still pretty good. It's certainly good enough for this demonstration that I want to go through. So yeah, let me show you what I've framed up and explain this concept to you. All right, so if you've bought a mirrorless digital camera anytime in the last, I don't know, five or seven years, particularly if you've got a full frame camera, most of them come with this brilliant feature which allows you to switch your camera into what they call crop mode. So I think the magnification factor is something like 1.5. If, if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll correct that with some graphics. Um, but basically you can assign pretty much any button on this camera. I've got it on my C1 button here. I press C1 and immediately I've doubled my focal length or pretty much close to double my focal length. And what that does is that enables me to try out different focal lengths without having to change my lens. One of my favorite prime lenses is my 55 millimeter. Uh, but once you put that on, you're kind of stuck because it's not a zoom, it's a prime. So I like to use my 16 to 35. And then if I get to the 35 range of my, of my focal length and it's not close enough and I want to kind of test, well, what would it look like if I put the 55 on? I just press this button, it bumps into crop mode and I can immediately see what a longer focal length will give me. And then if it looks good, then I know it's worth taking this lens off and putting on the 55. Now, sometimes it's super windy, it's rainy or it's humid. So I, I really don't like... I'll try and avoid switching lenses if I can. And this little trick shows me whether it's worth bothering with. But anyway, I'll show you the back of the camera and I'll explain in detail what my thought process is and how I go about doing this. All right, so what you're looking at now is I'm in full frame mode and I'm at 16 millimeter. So I like this shot, but I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, what would it look like if I, if I had a much longer focal length? So of course, if I zoom into 35, which I'll do now, you know, obviously you can't see the whole tree. I'm going to have to move back. So let's do that. I'm going to move back just up to behind this wall. And that'll give me my shot at 35 millimeter on my full frame, but then we'll take it a step further and see what it's like to get to 55 without actually changing the lens. So here's a, an additional tip. Whenever you're doing forest photography, if you can get up a slope and look down towards whatever tree it is that you're shooting, instead of angling up, what you're gonna do there is avoid any of that empty white 
canopy space up in the top of the frame, which really doesn't look that good unless you've, you've got fog. So especially in a situation like this where it's backlit, it's far better to look down towards the background, you know, the rest of the forest, even better if there's another hill behind the tree that you're shooting. But yeah, if you can get higher and look down, it's definitely going to solve any sort of white gaps in the sky problems, which really annoy me when I'm doing this type of photography. So I like this composition, but now I've reached the maximum of my, my zoom range. So I'm at, I'm at 35 millimeter. I can't get any closer unless I change lenses. Or can I? Well, I can. All I've got to do is press this button here and now that bumps me in to 1.5 i think it's 1.5 if i'm terrible at maths if i've got it wrong i'll put it up here in graphics but essentially by going into crop mode i've changed it from a 16 to 35 to a whatever the graphics say up here because <laughs> i'm just too stupid to do the calculations so that's bumped me in now to something that is pretty close to my 55 millimeter prime. I might have to make some slight adjustments, but that's pretty much what it's gonna be. But of course, I'm too close. I'm gonna have to move back because I can't even see the bottom of the tree. So let's grab this and uh, move up the hill to this spot. And then I'm gonna know for sure whether or not this 55 millimeter is gonna work. So let's just put this over here and it's gonna be something like this. Something like that is gonna be my, my 55 millimeter. And I can tell from here that, yeah, it's actually gonna work. So now I know it's gonna be worth me bothering to put that lens on. It's not too bad right now. There's no wind, there's no rain, there's hardly any humidity. So it's, it's gonna be fine. It's not something that I'm actually worried about today. But there are times when I really do not <laughs> wanna change lenses because the conditions are so abrasive that I just know my sensor is going to get completely covered in dust. And it's not so bad if you've got one of these, uh, these covers that you have on your sensor, like I have on the, the Sony A1. But on this camera, which is the Sony A7R4, I, I don't, I don't have that sensor cover. I feel like all cameras should really have that. Anyway, let's put the 55 on now and see what this looks like. Okay, let me just show you a couple of raw files. So on the left, you've got the 16 to 35 in crop mode at 35 millimeter, giving us a fake 52 millimeter. And on the right, you've got the 55 millimeter prime in full frame mode, which is pretty close. And that is how I test focal lengths without changing lenses. I do apologize to uh, those micro four thirds or APS-C shooters out there who don't have this function. I know it, it's, it's probably just exclusive to uh, full framers. So sorry about that. Might be time for you to get a full frame camera. But I, I just love these dry stone walls that are just covered in moss. That is one thing that I really miss, you know, living in Canada. I, I, there's, there's none of that sort of ancient history that I took for granted when I lived here. I'm not going to lie. So anyway, we're here for a few days. So I'm hoping that we get some either overcast or foggy conditions and I can come back here and uh, get some absolutely atmospheric forest shots. What do you like about being in the UK, love? Lemon curd. Lemon curd. It's the first time she's had lemon curd and... Uh, shortbread. Oh, you like shortbread, yeah. I love the shortbread. I like shortbread too. Do you know what? What? I, I'm eating gluten here and it's not affecting me. No shots. No nothing. How big are ticks here? Are they like tiny ticks? Oh, they can be tiny, yeah. I don't know if they have Lyme disease in the UK from the ticks. If you do know, post a comment and let me know. Because I have had, the only place I've ever had ticks was in Scotland and in England. Lots of them, you know, and it was, it was quite grim. But I don't think there's Lyme, is there? Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, whenever you are hiking through a tick infested forest, it is absolutely vital to wear appropriate footwear. Oh, what's that? No, don't. Acorn. We just bumped into a guy who was like a, a forest expert and he was actually foraging for hazelnuts. They have hazelnuts in this Scottish forest. 
So they go around getting these hazel nuts, crack them open. And you can eat them. I, I never had a clue. I, honestly, I didn't really think about where hazel nuts came from. But you know what else is good about the UK? Fish and chips. You can have fish and chips here because you won't get explosive diarrhea. The other thing that I love about Scotland, <laughs> kind of goes without saying, is castles, or, or, or better, ruins of castles. And today we've come to the, uh, I think this is the west coast of southern Scotland, to a really gorgeous ruin that I'm quite excited to see because I've never seen it before. But I've, <laughs> as usual, I've left it a bit late and I've got to get down to the beach real quick. Have a look at this business. I've left it really late. Um, the sun's just about to go down. I think I've got maybe five minutes. So I, I think I might have blown this in terms of pre-sunset light. And there's really not much cloud in the sky. It's just these wispies here, but you never know. I live in hope. They might just catch a bit of that post sunset glow, you know, that color change, that color shift. So I'm going to try and find something of interest in the foreground. And I've already found these quite interesting bits of, uh, I think this is algae, some kind of algae here, and a little reflecting pool there. These rocks over here are quite good, but they're good right now because the light's shining on them. Anyway, I'm going to start blabbing. <laughs> And if I can frame something decent up, then uh, I'll show you the back of the camera. I was rapidly running out of time and feeling rushed, which never results in the best compositions. But you work with what you can find. Well, I can see in the west, the setting sun is it's just blocked now by these clouds. Uh, and just as I was getting set up, there was some quite nice light on the castle itself and these, these wispies in the background. But I think I've blown it, love. Got some rocks. Did you? Well, as long as you got some rocks. Oh, look at these guys. These guys are having fun. That's what I should have been doing. Oh, look at that. They're going right into the sun. I felt so jealous. In fact, I was just feeling guilty because the stench from my flip flops had actually killed this jellyfish. A scene like this is probably going to be better on almost a grey, stormy day with dark, moody clouds behind that perhaps with the tide in a little bit more. I think that would be more suited to this kind of scene. But anyway, if this turns out to be anything better than completely terrible, <laughs> here's a shot. Well, you can't win them all, can you? Especially when you turn up late. I'll just have to log this one in memory and come back on a stormy day. And at least I had fish and chips and mushy peas to look forward to. I haven't had proper fish and chips in four years. Now, don't forget to put your bib on now. A bib? No, I don't want a bib. I'm a bit too old for that. You know what a mess you're getting to. Oh, come on. Oh, you're God. Daft. Put your chin up. I'm a 50 year old man, mother. I don't need a bib. You've put some weight on there, Gavin. It's a bit tight. There. Oh, Jesus. I don't need a bib, 50 year old man. You know what sort of a mess you make. Now tuck into your fish and chips. Oh, just look at that mess. I told you you needed a bib. You see what I mean, Amanda? What have I married? 